emergency. Hey, this is Alec Murdoch at 4147 Moselle Road. I need the police to ask us immediately. My wife and child just got badly. Okay, you said 4147 Moselle Road in Allison? On June 7, 2021, about 65 miles from Charleston, 52-year-old Alex Murdoch was panicking in his Islandton estate. He made a frantic call to 911 in the middle of the night. What was the reason behind this emergency call? As the emergency services picked up the call, Alex explained that his wife and son had been brutally murdered inside his property. I'm still here. Stay on the line. I'm still here, okay? Collison, I have an Alex Murdoch on the line. Call us from 4147 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. Uh-oh. Mr. Murdoch, go ahead and talk to Collison. It's 4147 Moselle Road. I've been up to it now. It's bad. Okay. Okay. Con County Communications. Collison, I have an Alex Murdoch on the line. Call us from 4147 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. Okay, and sir, give me the address again. It's 4147 Moselle Road. I've been up to it now. It's bad. Okay. The 911 operator then asked about Alex's situation and where he was located. Okay, and are they breathing? No, ma'am. Okay, and you said it's your wife and your son? My wife and my son. Are they in a vehicle? No, ma'am. They're on the ground out at my kennel. <laughs> Who could have murdered a wife and a son? And what was Alex Murdoch's connection to the murders? Let's find out. Hello, and welcome back to M7 Crime Storytime, where we cover solved, unsolved, and twisted cases from around the world. Today, we take a look at the case of a reputed legal dynasty's family members who were brutally murdered one night. The Murdoch family was a well-known legal dynasty in South Carolina with a history spanning over a century. The family's involvement in the legal profession began with Randolph Murdoch Sr., who was admitted to the South Carolina Bar in 1910. He went on to become a prominent lawyer, serving as a solicitor for the 14th Judicial Circuit in South Carolina for 20 years. He formed a law firm, Murdoch & Murdoch, in 1910. Randolph Murdoch's senior sons, Randolph Jr. and John, followed in their father's footsteps and became lawyers as well. The family's involvement in the legal profession continued with the younger generation. Several members of the family, including Alex Murdoch, had become lawyers and worked for the family's law firm. In addition to their public service, members of the Murdoch family had been involved in numerous high-profile cases, including landmark civil rights cases. Despite the recent controversies and legal troubles involving some members of the Murdoch family, their long-standing history of public service and contributions to the legal profession cannot be ignored. Alex Murdoch was born to Randolph Murdoch III and Elizabeth Libby Murdoch on May 27, 1968 in Hampton County, South Carolina. Alex attended the University of South Carolina and graduated with a degree in political science in 1990. He went on to attend the University of South Carolina School of Law, where he received his law degree in 1994. After graduating from law school, Alex joined his family's law firm, which had been in operation for over 70 years at that time. Alex met Maggie Branstetter while they were both attending the University of South Carolina. They got married on August 14, 1993, and their wedding was reportedly a large and lavish affair. The couple had two children together. After their marriage, Alex and Maggie settled in Hampton County, South Carolina, where they raised their two children. Paul Murdaugh was the younger son of Alex and Maggie. He was born on April 14, 1999, and grew up in Hampton County, South Carolina, where he attended high school at Hampton High School. After graduating from high school, Paul went on to attend the University of South Carolina, where he studied political science. Buster Murdaugh, Paul's elder brother, was born in 1996 and also attended Hampton High School. Following the tragic deaths of his brother and mother in June 2021, Buster had largely stayed out of the public eye. It was on June 7, 2021. 
As the night settled over Alex Murdaugh's sprawling estate in Island Town, South Carolina, he anxiously waited for his wife Maggie. She had a habit of playing with their beloved dogs in the kennel before retiring for the evening, and he couldn't wait to be reunited with her after his trip. Meanwhile, outside, their son Paul was hard at work replanting the garden after the recent strong winds had uprooted many of their cherished plants. But little did any of them know that this routine evening would soon turn into a nightmare. Alex's father was at the hospital, and his mother was a late-stage Alzheimer's patient. He decided to go check on his mom before settling in for the night. Meanwhile, he also texted Maggie, but there was no response. Anyhow, Alex came back from his mom's house and still found that both Paul and Maggie were not in the house. He knew they might be fooling around as usual, but as he made his way toward them, he stumbled upon something that would shatter his family's world forever. With a heart full of dread, Alex realized that his wife and son had been brutally murdered outside their home. The once idyllic estate was now a scene of unimaginable tragedy, and Alex's life would never be the same again. As Alec Murdaugh dialed 911 to report the heinous crime that had taken place on his property, his voice shook with a mixture of fear and horror. When Officer David Owen arrived on the scene, Alex struggled to contain his emotions as he recounted the gruesome details of what he'd witnessed. He's bad. He's bad. I checked the pulses. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is the firearm you brought from inside the house? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I went get. This is a long story. My son was in a boat wreck a few months back. He's been getting threats. Most of it's been benign stuff we didn't take serious. Okay. Um, you know, he, he's been getting, like, punched. <laughs> um, I know that's somebody, I know that's what it is. Through choked sobs, Alex described the chilling scene that had unfolded before his eyes. He spoke of the blood-soaked ground and the scattered remains of his son, Paul, whose brain and organs were now exposed to the night air. From back there? Okay, I went to the house and they weren't home, which was odd. I tried to call. Okay. And then I knew they had been down here before I left to go to my mom's. Okay. And so I, that is loaded. Okay. Um, you might want to unload it. But I mean. He frantically searched for any signs of life, his hands trembling as he checked his wife and son for pulses. And I ran over to Maggie and uh, actually, I think I tried to turn Paul over first. But the chilling reality soon dawned on him. There was no hope for their survival. For just a little while, I tried to call her when I left, <coughs> texted her, no response. Did you touch Maggie at all? I did. I touched them both. Okay. I tried to take, I mean, I tried to do it as limited as possible, mm -hmm. but I, I tried to take their pulse on both of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What family members did you call? Either? I called my brother Randy, and I called my brother John. And I tried to call a little boy, real good friend that's right around the corner from here, but I didn't get him. The police officer then asked Alex why he was outside his home so late. Alex revealed important information about his family. He told the officer that both his dad and mom are sick, and he needs to take care of them from time to time. What made you come out here tonight? Um, I went to, my mom's a late stage Alzheimer's patient. My dad's in the hospital. Um, my mom gets anxious when she does. I went to check on them and Maggie. Maggie's a dog lover and okay. she fools with the dogs. And I knew she'd gone to the kennel. I was at the house. <laughs> I left the house and went to my mom's <clears throat> for just a little while. Tried to call her when I left, <coughs> texted her, no response. Um, when I got back to the house, the house was obviously nobody was in there. So I figured they're still up here fooling around. He also said that his son, Paul, was out attending to the plants that had died. Paul was, um, gonna be getting set up to plant our sunflower seeds got sprayed and died and he was refiguring to do 
to plant the sunflower seeds. The police officer also asked Alex if he'd been having any problems with trespassers or neighbors around the area, but Alex denied it. He said he only knew one problem that his son, Paul, had been involved in, and that was the boat wreck incident. Have y'all been having any problems out here? Trespassers, none people that, breaking in? None that I know of. The only thing that what comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, mm -hmm. wonderful relationship. And yours and Paul's relationship? As good as it could be. How old is Paul? 22. Okay. You know his date of birth? I do. April 11th, 96 is his brother's. April 14th, 99 is Paul's. Yeah, about, what's Maggie's full name? Margaret Brandstetter Murdoch. And her date of birth, sir? September 15th, 1968. Have y'all been having any problems out here? Trespassers, none people that I, breaking in? None that I know of. The only thing that what comes to my mind is my son Paul was in a boat wreck uh, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's been a, you know, he was charged with being uh, arrested for being the driver. There's been a lot of negative publicity about that, and there's been a lot of people online, just really vile stuff. But when Paul's out and about, I mean, people routinely, I don't think I know the full story, um, so I don't think they give it to me. But, I mean, he's been punched and hit and just attacked a lot. So, you know, but, I mean, nothing like this. Yeah. The boating accident that Paul Murdoch was involved in occurred on February 24th, 2019 in Beaufort County, South Carolina. The idyllic waters of Archer's Creek in South Carolina were shattered by a tragedy that would haunt the Murdoch family for years to come. Paul, the son of the family, was at the helm of a boat carrying six passengers, including 19-year-old Mallory Beach, when it crashed into a bridge piling. What bridge is it? Paul, what bridge is this? Oh, 911, where's your emergency? Hello? Police, fire, any of us? Hello? We're in a boat crash on Archer Street. Where, where about on Archer Street? In Archer Street, the only bridge on Archer Street. The impact was devastating, and Mallory was thrown from the boat, her body lost in the murky waters. It would be a week before her lifeless body was found, her young life snuffed out by the horrific accident. The other passengers on the boat were injured, their bodies and spirits battered by the trauma of the crash. There's a six foot gash where the boat actually came apart at the scene from the nose toward the back, six foot long. Paul was charged with three felonies in connection with the accident, but Mallory's tragic death would leave the case unresolved leaving a cloud of sorrow and suspicion hanging over the entire community. The Murdoch family's prominent status in the area only added to the tragedy, as whispers of a possible cover-up by law enforcement swirled around the investigation. And this tragedy may have been the start of their fall. For the families of the victims, the pain of loss would never fully heal, a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating toll of one fateful night on Archer's Creek. As the investigation into the Murdoch family's tragedy deepened, the authorities stumbled upon a disturbing piece of evidence. The police discovered bullet shells littering the grounds of the Murdoch family's home on the night of June 7, 2021. The implications were chilling, raising more questions than answers. Was this the work of a ruthless intruder? Or had the violence originated from within the walls of the Murdoch estate? The weight of uncertainty hung heavy in the air as the search for answers continued. 
by your feet. I need to collect them. I saw one over here. There's some two right there. Okay, yes, he actually spent crazy. I'm gonna get a dynamic. All right, go ahead and pick that one up. There's two, two. right there. Yep. They've been here a little while. Could be 300. There's one to your right. The possibility that the shell casings might be connected to the murders was a chilling prospect, leaving those affected by the tragedy to grapple with the possibility of even more senseless violence. Right here. Just trying to discreetly just here to go. Look at the orientation. Separately, don't rub them together too much. Yeah. Keep from uh, scarring them. Yeah. Following the discovery of bullet shells at the Murdoch family's home in the wake of the brutal murders of Paul and Maggie Murdoch, law enforcement officials sprung into action. They combed through the property, leaving no stone unturned. Meanwhile, family members and associates were put through rigorous interviews as the authorities searched for answers. The investigation was shrouded in secrecy, with the full extent of the police's findings kept under wraps. However, a bombshell revelation had emerged. The possibility that the murders were linked to the boating accident that had taken Mallory's life. As the investigation raced forward, potential motives for the heinous act began to emerge. Was the Beach family involved in the murder? Did they do this to take revenge? Or was this something else? But wait, there was something else. Another great revelation was about to be revealed. As the investigation into the murders of Paul and Maggie Murdaugh intensified, a shocking development came to light. The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division had reopened an investigation into a 2015 hit-and-run case involving the death of 19-year-old Stephen Smith. In 2015, Stephen Smith was killed in a hit-and-run accident in Hampton County, South Carolina. Despite extensive investigation, no one was ever charged in connection with his death. Fast forward to 2021, after the murders of Paul and Maggie Murdaugh, the case gained renewed attention as authorities began investigating whether the murders and Smith's death were somehow connected. Enter Alex, a prominent South Carolina lawyer who was connected to the hit-and-run death of Stephen Smith through his work as a lawyer for the family of the driver who was suspected of hitting Smith. Murdaugh represented the driver's family in a wrongful death lawsuit that was filed by Smith's family. In 2017, the lawsuit was settled for $500,000, with the driver admitting no fault in Smith's death. Following the murders of Paul and Maggie Murdaugh, Questions were raised about whether the Murdoch family's connections to the hit-and-run case may have played a role in the murders. Now, the authorities had two potential leads who could be involved in the murder of Alex's wife and son. First was the Beach family, who had been wronged by the Murdaughs, and the second was the Smith family, who had been cheated by the Murdaughs. But again, 
the investigation team had no solid proof against either of these families. During the investigation into the Murdoch family murders, another stunning development emerged. On September 2, 2021, an employee at Alex Murdaugh's law firm stumbled upon a curious check made out to Alex Murdaugh, not the law firm, for a whopping $3 million. The check was from an account belonging to the law firm, but had been deposited into Alex Murdaugh's account. As the news broke, the law firm confronted Alex Murdaugh, and a probe by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division began. The identity of the employee who uncovered the check was kept confidential, and the investigation focused on whether the missing funds were related to the Murdaugh family murders or other illegal activities. In their search for answers, law enforcement agents executed search warrants at the law firm and other Murdaugh family properties, interviewed family members, associates, and friends, and performed forensic examinations of electronic devices and other evidence. This information, and the information about the Smith's Hit and Run case, revealed a lot about Alex's character. The sobbing father and husband, who was once panicking while calling 911, was now a cheat and a fraud. A bombshell dropped on September 6, 2021, when reports revealed that Alex had been forced to resign from his prestigious law firm following a $3 million fraud discovery. The check had been deposited into his personal account, raising suspicions among the firm's management. An investigation by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division was launched into the missing funds, with media reports hinting at a massive embezzlement scheme that may have been going on for years. In the aftermath of the scandal, the firm's statement announced Murdaugh's resignation as necessary for the benefit of our firms and clients. On September 4, 2021, the unimaginable happened to Alex Murdaugh. He was shot while inspecting a flat tire on the side of a deserted rural road in South Carolina. The bullet hit close to his head. Okay, what's going on? I stopped, I got a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and somebody stopped to help me. And when I turned my back, they tried to shoot me. Oh, okay, were you shot? Yes, but I mean, I'm okay. You shot where, where were you shot at? Huh? Did they actually shoot you or they tried to shoot you? They shot me, but... Uh, okay, wait, you need EMS? Uh, well, I mean, yes, I, I can't drive. Okay. I'm and I'm bleeding a lot. Where, where part of your body? Uh, I'm not sure, somewhere on my head. Your head? Somewhere on my head. Somebody just stopped for me, ma'am. He claimed that he'd pulled over to check on his car's tire when a passing vehicle opened fire on him. At first, the incident seemed like a random shooting, but things soon began to unravel. Investigators questioned the timelines of events and the severity of Murdaugh's injuries. Was he really shot, or was this just an elaborate ruse? As the investigation unfolded, the police began to suspect that Murdaugh himself may have staged the shooting to deflect attention away from himself as a possible suspect in the murders. The case became a race against time as investigators dug deeper into the web of lies and secrets surrounding the Murdaugh family. With every twist and turn, the stakes grew higher and the truth more elusive. Would they be able to solve the case before it was too late? After the shooting incident on September 4th, 2021, Alex Murdaugh shocked the world with a statement through his lawyers. In the statement, he confessed to a lot of decisions that he truly regrets and said that he was entering rehab and stepping away from his responsibilities. But what were these decisions? Was he struggling with substance abuse or mental health issues? The media and public couldn't stop speculating. The statement was released amidst an ongoing investigation into the murders of his wife and son, as well as allegations of misappropriated funds from his law firm. Murdaugh's lawyers asked for privacy and said that their client was committed to making amends. But with the intense scrutiny surrounding Murdaugh and his family, it was clear that the truth was about to be uncovered. What would happen next? The world held its breath as the shocking events continued to unfold. In a stunning turn of events, 
On September 14, 2021, Alex Murdaugh shockingly pleaded guilty to charges related to the shooting incident and made a jaw-dropping admission that left the public reeling. He admitted to masterminding a plan with Curtis Edward Smith to stage his own shooting in order to collect a staggering $10 million life insurance payout for his son, Richard. Okay, so Mr. Murdaugh had somebody shoot him in the head on the roadside to get to, 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 to have a 10 or $12 million insurance policy paid to his son, Buster. Prosecutors revealed that Murdaugh had provided Smith with a gun and detailed instructions on how to carry out the hit. I was there and I, I, I saw Alec, he'd been shot to, um, I was there um, um, and I tried to stop Alec um, to, yes, I shot him in the head. This bombshell revelation added yet another layer of intrigue to an already convoluted and high-profile case, which had already been marked by murder, accusations of financial misconduct, and intense scrutiny of the Murdoch family's prominent position in South Carolina's legal and political circles. On September 16, Alex Murdaugh, scion of the Murdaugh dynasty, was found guilty of planning a suicide scheme. According to his lawyers, he was struggling with mental health issues and had turned to painkillers and other drugs to cope. In the depths of South Carolina's rural countryside, a 57-year-old woman named Gloria Satterfield met a mysterious end. In February 2018, tragedy struck as Gloria Satterfield, a devoted nanny and housekeeper of more than two decades, suffered a fall at the Murdaugh family home. Despite fighting for her life for several weeks, she eventually succumbed to her injuries. But things took a suspicious turn after the funeral. Enter Mr. Murdaugh, who introduced Gloria's two adult sons to his buddy, Corey Fleming, promising to help them get to the bottom of their mother's death. However, the sons soon discovered they were in the dark about the relationship between Mr. Fleming and their wealthy employer. And to add insult to injury, they had yet to receive any of the $2.8 million settlement that was supposed to be paid out, with a total agreement of $4.3 million after lawyer's fees. However, amid this tragic turn of events, Ms. Satterfield's family made a bold accusation. They alleged that the Murdoch family was responsible for Gloria's death, hoping to collect settlement funds related to her passing. The revelation sent shockwaves through the small South Carolina community as the Murdaugh's connections to the local legal and political establishment were scrutinized once more. As the investigation into Gloria Satterfield's depth deepened, it became clear that the story of the Murdaugh family was far from over, and the tragedy of those caught up in their web continued to unfold. Fast forward to October 2021, and the long arm of the law finally caught up with Mr. Murdaugh. Police arrested him on two counts of obtaining property by false pretenses, a serious felony offense carrying a hefty maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. And where did they nab him? At a detox center in sunny Orlando, Florida. This was another blow to Alex Murdaugh. In between the investigation of Alex's beloved wife and son, Alex's life was falling apart. The investigation team had finally caught up with the lies and frauds of Alex Murdaugh, uncovering a web of deceit that spanned years. But as they delved deeper into his sordid past, they began to wonder, could the murders of his wife and son have been a calculated move to throw the authorities off his scent? Rumors began to swirl that someone may have targeted Alex's family for the hefty insurance payout, leaving him as the sole beneficiary. But with Alex's mounting debts and a long history of shady dealings, suspicions soon turned toward him as the mastermind behind the heinous crime. As the police began to re-examine Alex's old testimonies from the day of the murders, they picked up on a series of inconsistencies that only added to the mounting evidence against him. With each new clue, the web of lies and deceit grew thicker, leaving investigators on the edge of their seats as they closed in on the truth. The investigation team had been poring over the evidence in the Murdoch case for months, searching for any clue that could crack the case wide open. And then they found it, 
a major breakthrough that would send shockwaves through the community. It all started with a video, one that captured a seemingly innocuous moment between Alex and his son Paul. <laughs> Just hours before Paul's untimely death. In the footage, Alex could be seen wearing a pale blue shirt as he helped Paul plant trees on the family estate. But when Alex called the police after the murders, he was wearing a completely different shirt, a crisp white one. The discovery sent chills down the spines of the investigators as they realized the gravity of what this could mean. Why would Alex change his shirt in the midst of such a horrific tragedy? And more importantly, what else had he been hiding from them all this time? As the pressure mounted, Alex had no answer to these questions, leaving the investigators to draw their own conclusions. With this newfound evidence, they could finally confirm that Alex was present at the scene of the crime on the night of the murders, despite his repeated denials over the past 20 months. The revelation had the potential to blow the case wide open and bring the killer to justice. On the night of the murders, when the police interviewed Alex, he clearly said that he did not have any issues with his wife and that his marriage was going smoothly. Had Maggie and Paul been arguing over anything? No. What was their relationship like? Wonderful. Wonderful. How about yours and Maggie's? Wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, mm -hmm. wonderful relationship. <laughs> but a day after the murders, the estate's housekeeper found Maggie's, Alex's wife's, ring under the seat of her car. The housekeeper then revealed to the police that Maggie did not wear her wedding ring on the night of the murders. Why was this? People usually don't wear their wedding rings when their marriage isn't going well. Again, Alex had no answer to this question either. This was a win for the police. Apparently, a local newspaper in Richard County, where Alex was jailed, published taped phone calls between Alex and his son Buster. Buster was overheard telling his father that he'd done some illegal shit, to which his father Alex jokingly responded by saying that he had allegedly done illegal shit. Well, I think it does matter, man. I don't think it's, I mean, I mean something's got to give. I mean, I understand that you've done illegal shit, but that doesn't mean you can just, you know, turn a cold shoulder to the laws of the United States. Allegedly done illegal stuff. <laughs> he was making fun of the trial and the whole legal process. This confirmed that Alex had actually done something more than fraud because he was already in jail for the crimes he'd committed. Now the police got evidence that Alex was a liar. First he lied about not being at the crime scene, but the police found the pale blue shirt video. Then he also lied about committing fraud at his firm in the sense that he knew he was committing a crime when he stole from his firm. This was enough to build a strong case against Alex. On the day of the murders, Alex was about to be exposed for stealing from his firm. According to the firm, he was supposed to deposit $800,000 in lawyer fees in the bank account of the firm, but he failed to do so. So that's the firm actually as we found these put money in client trust. We then met with all the clients, reestablished what the correct disbursements should have been and returned all funds to the clients. So the firm had to pay the money back, but you've determined in each one of these cases that Alec Murdoch misappropriated through the fake forge on this list. We did. The police thought this could be a reason why the murders occurred on that specific day. Alex could have distracted the police with the murders and the stolen money case could have stayed hidden. The twists and turns of the Alec Murdoch case had left everyone on the edge of their seats. From the sudden death of his wife and son, to the revelation of his massive debt and shady financial dealings, the story had all the makings of a true crime thriller. But just when everyone thought they had it all figured out, the case took an insane turn. In a shocking admission in May 2022, Alex revealed that he owed Ms. Satterfield's sons a staggering $4.3 million plus lawyer's fees. While the police launched an investigation into her death, which had been registered as natural on her death certificate, despite suspicions to the contrary. Then in December, 2022, Alex was indicted on nine counts of tax evasion, 
with prosecutors alleging that he had defrauded people of a mind-boggling $8.8 million. And just when it seemed like things couldn't get any crazier, the homicide trials began in January 2023, with Alex standing accused of murdering his own wife and son. The evidence against him was overwhelming, and with his criminal history ranging from Stephen Smith to Ms. Gloria Satterfield, it seemed like the case was all but sealed. But the most seasoned true crime enthusiasts were left stunned when, on March 2, 2023, the jury delivered their verdict. Alex Murdaugh was indeed the murderer of his own wife and son. The revelation sent shockwaves through the community and left everyone wondering what other secrets this twisted case might still be hiding. At the start of this case, nobody could have ever guessed that the crying and panicking face of Alex Murdaugh who had called 911 immediately after the murder of his wife and son, could actually kill someone. The forensic analysis of the gunshot residue found on Alex's clothes matched with the gunshot residue on the entry and exit wounds over the bodies of Paul and Maggie. This rightly proved that the gun which killed Paul and Maggie was held by Alex himself. If a recently fired firearm was wrapped up, wrapped up inside that jacket, would that be consistent with your findings? There is a possibility of that, yes, sir. After this evidence and all the others, Alex was sentenced to two life sentences without parole. He was sent to Kirkland Detention Center, where he'd live for 45 days until the authorities determined which maximum security prison would be suitable for Alex. With Alex in jail for this brutal crime, it leaves us with many questions. Why was Alex involved in so many financial scams even after being born into a super rich family? Did Alex kill his wife and son just to distract the authorities and gain sympathy so that he could hide his fraud schemes and the illegal scams he'd done? Or were these murders done to gain more insurance money from the insurers? <laughs>